Labour's been warning of mass unemployment, calling for a back-to-work budget. So this week, you must be very pleased by what we've seen. Uh, lots of focus uh, on uh, jobs uh, in Rishi Sunak's uh, statement and Boris Johnson saying we should be going back to work if we can. Well, I'm afraid I think the summer statement this week was a real missed opportunity, possibly the last opportunity we have had to save tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of of jobs over the coming months with some very poorly targeted and badly designed uh, schemes which are just not up to the task of saving all those jobs especially in some of the key sectors most adversely affected by this crisis and I think we've gone from a government saying it will do whatever it takes to Rishi Sunak saying on Wednesday he would do whatever he can and in between that rhetoric will fall uh, many businesses, many jobs and some key sectors uh, will fall between the gap of whatever it takes and whatever it can. So the government really do need to do more, I think. And I think there's some ideology getting in the way here now, uh, why they won't support key sectors uh, that they said that they would. Uh, you know, they seem to have this aversion to what they might call picking winners, but instead what they're doing is, I'm afraid, creating losers. And I think ideology is getting in the way of them really taking quite a creative approach to the furlough scheme so that we can really support and retain and protect jobs over these coming weeks and months. At the same time, though, um, isn't the reality that the government won't be able to save every job or save every business? This is an unprecedented challenge. The furlough scheme has been uh, an unprecedented uh, response uh, to that challenge uh, and of course at some point it does need to be wound down you're talking about more targeting as well but surely uh, the government needs to get things out as quickly as possible rather than doing things uh, that could be more complicated and frankly take more time to do well yes they, they they do need to do that but they really could have focused you know these large sums of money that they were talking about on on wednesday where they were needed most you know is the uh, nine billion pound furlough bonus or the three and a half billion pound uh, stamp duty relief is that going to save the tens of thousands of jobs in the aerospace aviation uh, automotive sectors that really received nothing at all on Wednesday and uh, falling far short of their own expectations what is that going to do to support a hospitality uh, sector really that really still needs it even though it's now parts of it have now reopened, they're operating at less than 50% of capacity and are likely to for, for many months ahead. So we could have seen, I think, more creativity and much more targeting and better use of some of the funds uh, that they identified. And, and of course, may, you know, maybe not every business and every job uh, can be saved, but let's just remember that every business that goes bust in this crisis, every job that is lost, uh, because of this crisis, that were previously viable businesses, previously decent, good jobs, as as, as few weeks ago as February, every single one of those will okay. really deepen and lengthen that recession, okay. and will take a long time for this country to to come back. Okay. From. I am going to have to come in just because that's a few things that I do want to um, get across uh, in the interview without running out of time. Um, one of the uh, big parts of trying to reopen, particularly the hospitality industry, is to convince people that it's safe to go shopping, uh, safe to go to restaurants and bars. And of course, uh, face coverings uh, could be a big part of that. Do you think that face coverings should be mandatory in shops as they are in Scotland? And was it a good example to set uh, last week when you and Keir Starmer went to a bar uh, in London without wearing face masks yourselves? Well, I think we need real clarity on this issue now from the government. I mean, well, to again, get clarity, just, wouldn't it be helpful to actually wear the face coverings? Well, yes, and we, we followed the, um, the guidance that is the guidance uh, in Brewdog, where we were on Monday, obviously in bars and restaurants. It, it's not mandatory to wear uh, face masks so that you can eat and, and drink and, and be in, in those locations. Was it a mistake to not wear one, though? But it, it wasn't it wasn't what the requirement was of us uh, going into to that venue. But I do agree with you that we do need to get a lot more confidence back in the system. And if uh, mandatory wearing of face masks in shops will help to do that, then we absolutely support it. And we think the government, instead of just kind of showing a bit of leg occasionally on these things by briefing newspapers or or saying things uh, that are not clear guidance in, in press conferences, as the Prime Minister did on Friday, 
you know, get some clarity. That's the sort of thing that will really get confidence back in, into the system and get people feeling that they can go to the shops, they can go to restaurants, they can go to bars. So you support the idea of mandatory face masks, even though you didn't wear one yourself? Well, I, I would support the, the, the mandatory, absolutely. And that, I think, is for shops. I think, obviously, in bars and restaurants, there are different issues there, because if you're in a bar or a restaurant, you are eating food, you are drinking, uh, and, and so on. So it's, that's why the guidance is, is different at the moment in bars and restaurants. OK. Now, I'm interested to talk to you a little bit about uh, women and the particular impact uh, that the lockdown and the economic hit of coronavirus might have on women uh, who predominantly work in a lot of the sectors that are most impacted, things like hospitality, for example, and the beauty industries. Um, and also, uh, if you look at, for example, research from the IFS, it suggests that working mothers, uh, mothers one and a half times more likely than fathers to have been lost their job or quit since lockdown began, more likely to lead to have been furloughed, in lockdown, mothers combined work and childcare in 47% of their working hours compared to 30% of fathers. Are you worried that lockdown is going to send us back to the 1950s? I'm really worried about the implications of, of this crisis on women in particular, uh, also those of black and ethnic minority backgrounds too. A, a woman under the age of 25 is six times more likely to be in a job at risk as a result of, of coronavirus than, than a man over the age of, of 25. And somebody who's black and ethnic minority background is twice as likely. So there are real uh, implications here. The care, the childcare sector is in uh, massive distress. As you say, women are much more likely to be working in some of the sectors that haven't yet been allowed to reopen or reopen fully. So uh, beauty was much later than pubs and restaurants. I mean, I fully support pubs and restaurants, but you know, we need to look at uh, beauty as well. And now they can only partially reopen. Um, the events and, and wedding sector still in complete lockdown. These, these disproportionately employ people, uh, young women, and disproportionately employ people of black and ethnic minority backgrounds. So I think we need a, a, a proper strategic approach here to how we are going to support uh, different types of people in different parts of the country, uh, both to protect them in the jobs that they're in, but also how they could okay. uh, get into new work. Now, Keir Starmer has been leader of Labour for 100 days. Um, I might be at fault here, but I can't think of a single policy that he's announced in that time. Can you help me out? Well, I don't, I don't think now's the time for uh, manifesto commitments, especially not because of the context that we're in. You know, we're in an unprecedented public health and economic crisis with things I mean no one's expecting unbelievably a manifesto. quickly no one's expecting a manifesto this far away from the election but what I'm a little bit uh, confused about is the lack of policies any policies is, is the only policy that Keir Starmer has that he isn't Jeremy Corbyn no I don't think that's fair at all I think he's got off to a fantastic start as leader I think in your first hundred days as leader of the opposition fresh out of a general election to have made such an impact on uh, the public, the public really like him, they've got to know him, they like what he's about, they like the way he's been challenging the government where necessary, but being constructive uh, with the government where that's not necessary. And I think, you know, he's really begun to make his mark on the Labour Party and to do that... But not that, a single policy in 100 days. Well, no, that's not true. I think, you know, we've been clear that we've, that we've got differences with the government. There are things that we would have done differently. For example, on the, eco on the economic crisis, we would have a much more flexible approach to the furlough. We would extend the, the furlough scheme. We would do, be doing a lot more now today to protect the jobs of today with real support for key sectors uh, like aerospace, like automotive, like hospitality, uh, than the government are willing and able to do. And we would... Uh, Spend okay. some of that money more wisely as well. OK, now, just to finish, one area that I am a little bit confused on policy-wise is whether or not Labour is considering a wealth tax or an asset tax. So first, Keir Starmer said the government should look at wealth taxes. The Shadow Chancellor, Annalise Dodd, said we need a new settlement. Then this week, she said Labour wasn't calling for higher taxes. And then, just in case we weren't confused enough already, Dan Cardin, the tre Shadow Treasury Minister, then said that reports Labour were ditching plans for a wealth tax were false. So... Can you please help me out here? What is actually going on? Well, look, we, we're, we're a long way off um, these kind of conversations. And that is because you know, we don't know what the state of the, the public finances are, are going to be. And indeed, the government don't know that either. 
Rishi Sunak uh, agreed with, with us uh, this week when he said that the real uh, big indicator of any hole or any size and shape of hole in the public finances in the coming months is whether we can protect jobs and employment today because mass redundancies, mass job losses will have a devastating impact, not just for those individuals, but on the public finances with less taxes coming in and more uh, money going out in terms of benefits and so on. So we can really shape what is going to be necessary for the future of, of any tax and spend policy today by protecting and creating jobs today. And that is our focus. That is what we, we want to see. We want to see a, a vibrant, a healthy economy that is growing with people in work and that is the best way to protect our okay. public finances. Thank you.